Joining me now is the chair of the House Judiciary Committee, Democrat Jerry Nadler of New York. Chairman Nadler, welcome back to Meet the Press. Good morning. Good to be here. Okay. This week, uh, what does this look like? Is this the beginning of the drafting of the articles of impeachment? Is that what this week is going to be about? Well, this week is going to start with tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Monday, we're going to have uh, the report from the Intelligence Committee, uh, uh, examination of their uh, of their people by by both sides, and uh, after that we'll have decisions to make about drafting articles and where it goes. Explain how that decision process works. Is this, is this going to be um, in a committee hearing that we'll all watch, or are you going to make these decisions behind closed doors to say, okay, we've decided to do abuse of power here, bribery there, and you know how? Give well, me a little uh, sense of what it looks like. There'll be a lot of consultations, I assume, between members of the committee, between with the House leadership. Uh, with, with members of the House, and we'll have to make those decisions. Uh, we'll bring articles of impeachment, presumably, before the committee at some point uh, later in the week. Have you have an idea of how many articles you, you, you think we're going to drop? Though, you're not ready yet. I'm, I'm you seem not, to be hesitant. I, I, I'm not ready to decide that, and it's, it's not just my decision, obviously. Is this but, the Speaker? Is this a Speaker? You may come up with recommendations, and she ultimately says, do this, not that. Well, she'll, she'll have a role, as, as, as may other members of the caucus. Uh, but the decisions have to be made based on, on everything we've learned until now and based on what we hear tomorrow. But remember, um, some of these things are very clear at this point. Uh, there is overwhelming evidence, uh, uncontested by the Republicans, that the president put himself above the country, that the president uh, sought foreign assistance in, in elections, sought to cover it up, um, uh, completely defied uh, uh, participation in, in the congressional investigation, um, uh, in order to hide his role, that he sought foreign assistance for the next election. This what is that a definition of? Is that an abuse of power allegation that you're describing to well, me? Well, there are several things. Bribery allegation. What allegation it's are you describing there? Well, it's certainly abuse of power. It might be abuse of con uh, uh, obstruction of Congress and, and is not uh, uh, cooperating. Mm -hmm. You know, he refused every single document. He told everybody in the executive branch, do not cooperate, do not answer, do not testify. No president has ever done anything like that. So th this is a, a defiance of the role of Congress uh, given by the, by the Constitution for impeachment. But again, he put himself above the country. He sought to uh, uh, get foreign interference uh, against the integrity of our election. And this is a matter of urgency to deal with because we have to make sure that the next election is conducted with integrity and without foreign interference. During your hearing um, with the constitutional um, scholars this week, you seem to hint that you're inclined to include some of the allegations in the Mueller report in, in, an, article, in, in an article or possibly more of impeachment. I know that that is not, sh that, as you know, that is, not a, that is not unanimous inside the Democratic caucus. W where are you on this? I, I'm, I'm reserving judgment. We're going to have to decide what to do after we, see, after we have the evidence tomorrow and after consultations with others in the caucus. There are a wide variety of factors that have to be considered, including um, um, the degree of proof, the degree of, uh, of confidence, and, and, and where the members of the caucus are. Um, uh, we certainly have an abundance of evidence mm -hmm. on, very, on various things. And again, the Republicans have virtually not contested this. All of that they have said... Yeah. All that they have said is they've opposed the process, but not the evidence. Hey, by the way, if Pat Cipollone shows up tomorrow, you going to let him in? President's counsel? He has said he's not showing up. I understand he, that. But he, if he just say, changes he his invited. mind, this is the president of the United States, you never know. He might, he might be tweeting it as you and I are speaking. Hey, I'm sending my lawyer tomorrow. you going to let him? We'd have to decide that. Uh, he is uh, guilty at this point of the most uh, blatant contempt of Congress. Who just is guilty? Ju the, the president, you mean? No, or Cipollone. Just for, Cipollone. Just for, I don't mean as a crime, but, okay. but just the, the, the contempt dripping from the two letters, several letters he sent us. Uh, but that aside, uh, he has said he's not going to come, so I think that's a very academic question. They were invite, the president was invited to submit a testimony, mm -hmm. was invited to s send his counsel. He has declined to do so. I want to show what some members of some Democratic members who are in these sort of Trump districts have been saying about what they want to see in this idea of the impeachment inquiry expanding. Here's Elaine Luria. I don't think we should be throwing the whole kitchen sink and try to overreach. Uh, ben McAdams, activities from the 2016 election should be left to voters in the 2020 election. Tom Malinowski, uh, New Jersey, if we impeach the president for everything he has done that is impeachable, it would probably take us until 2025. Well, he is certainly, he is certainly uh, Tom is certainly correct in that. I, I, do you, look, do you think it's important for you to write an article of impeachment that has um, Democratic support 
And if you don't think it has a majority support, you won't write the article. I'm not going to say that, but I do think obviously we want the House to pass the, the, the resolutions that, that we put forward. Um, so that's, that's one factor to consider, obviously. But again, we also have to consider the fact that uh, we, we have to call the president for his violations of the Constitution and for posing the, the, the considerable risk that he poses to the next election. Uh, I'm curious, though, the political divide that we have. This was something that concerned you 20 years ago. This is what you said 20 years ago. Um, actually, 21 years ago, almost to the, to the 21 years ago to the month. Impeaching a president when you have not got a broad consensus of the American people, a broad agreement of almost everybody that this fellow has got to go because he's a clear and present danger to our liberty and to our Constitution. Without that, you cannot and should not impeach a president because to do so is to call into the question the legitimacy of all of our political institutions. That has been the conundrum of this impeachment process. I, I, I understand that, hey, you guys believe you're following the rule of law, but you have a wall of partisan uh, uh, objection to this. Does that matter? Well, of course it matters, but the polling now shows that 70 percent of the American people are convinced that the president has done something very wrong. Uh, and 70 percent aren't ready to oust him. Well, we're, we're not through with the process, but 70 percent of the American people have said that uh, uh, they understand the president has done something very wrong. And we also are faced with the very direct threat that uh, this president put himself repeatedly above the interests of the country and poses a threat to the integrity of the next election. That's not something we were talking about uh, 20 years ago. He poses a threat to the integrity of the next election if he's allowed to continue uh, to, to do what he's doing. What's the unintended stop... consequence will... of impeaching him and, ha and, and, him, and him being acquitted, how he will take well, acquittal? I don't know how he will take acquittal. I don't know if he'll be acquitted. The senators are going to have to decide. The House members first are going to have to decide. And then the senators are going to have to decide in the face of an abundance of uncontested evidence that the president poses a threat to our election, that he put himself, ab his own interests, above the interests of the country. Are they going to be patriots or are they going to be partisans? Let me ask you this. If he's acquitted, do you believe we'll have a fair election in 2020? I don't know. The president, uh, based on his past performance, will do everything he can to make it not a fair election. And that is part of what gives us the urgency uh, to proceed with this impeachment. Chairman Nadler, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thank you for coming on and sharing your views. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd. And thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.